What's up guys, it's Rowan here from Art of Smart TV. You know, the HSC can feel like a journey where if you make one mistake, everything's screwed. And this is particularly the case if you've got a really big goal for year 12. Now today I'm gonna to be chatting with James who had goals to study medicine at university and during year 12 ended up getting 56% in an advanced math assessment. And so you can imagine getting that result and thinking, oh no, my dreams of medicine are just absolutely screwed, I'm in trouble. Now, James's story though is a really powerful one because if we fast forward, James managed to turn his results around from a 56%, he scored a band six externally, an 89 overall, you know, which is a really staggering 33% mark improvement over a relatively short period of time. Now, not only did James do this, but he ended up getting an offer for medicine as well. So we're gonna find out from James how he turned things around. And we're also gonna hear really how James's journey is proof that everything is not screwed if you screw up one assessment during your HSC. So welcome, James. G'day. Now, what happened here? So you're, you're taking advanced maths, um, you end up scoring 56% in assessment. When was that assessment and what went wrong? My first assessment in term four, like at the end of year 11, I think that one was okay, but I think going into the start of, of term one for the new year, I don't think I'd done enough preparation in the holidays, and I don't think I, I really had the drive that I needed, so I wasn't doing much study or much work at all, and um, yeah, kind of had a wake-up call at the end of term one going, ooh. Got your results, and so we're midway through the, you know, the, the year 12, right? Because at the end of term one, you've had two terms, um, you get this wake-up call, which sounds like was more a result of, as you said, n not doing the work. How did you feel though when you know you got that back and you've seen 56% at the top? Yeah, I feel like, because it, it was a really easy test too, and I went out of the test like, yes, I'm going to ace this. And um, I was, when, I, when I got it, I, I just sat there and I was like, oh, you're kidding me. And I was so disappointed and um, yeah, just, just kind of devastated. Usually I don't get too worked up, but I was, was pretty sad that time. Yeah, wow, and, and thanks for sharing that because I think that's not uncommon, right? I mean, particularly I know your goals for, for med as well. Um, if we fast forward, you, you got, was it, was it 91 external and 89 internal, uh, overall I should say? I think I got 92 external and like 86 internal or something like that. Okay, so it averaged out about 89 overall, which is fantastic. So 56, proof that you can turn things around. Yeah. Now, your goal was med, uh, you ended up getting an offer for, for med whereabouts? Um, University of Adelaide. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. So you're deferring, is that correct? Yes, I'm deferring it this year. Um, I got my, my offer like two or three weeks ago, and so it's not enough time to be able to move into state, and I think I'd be homesick, so I'm not quite ready to, to move over, but deferring this year. So I think just to highlight here, before we dive in to look at what you did to turn things around, I think just for some inspiration and hope for other students, 56% and yet you still got into a course that you wanted to do and, and albeit you know one of the most competitive courses, um, medicine. Um, so I think that's just a really powerful, I think, story and, and I think encouragement for students. Um, what did you do to turn it around? Um, well, firstly, I think I decided that I did need a tutor. Um, my, my class teacher was pretty hopeless. She, she was nice, but didn't really learn much from her. And um, I think in the initial stages of just trying to, to improve my marks, I needed to know what was going wrong. So having someone to bounce my questions off and just really solidify the foundations was helpful. Um, leading up to the HSC, I still wasn't quite performing where I wanted to be. I think in that, that final two or three month stretch, the best thing you can do is just work hard and just do, do as much practice as you can and, and really um, really try and have like a, a solid understanding of, of, of every concept in the course. So by the end of the, the HSC, I, I could have done anything just in seconds. So step one, if we just try to put some steps in here for students practically, Sounds like step one was to, to ask for help, to go, okay, like it's not where I want it to be, let's get some help in to s try to change some things. Um, and that was working with Clement, one of our Artist Smart tutors. Yeah. Um, what were you doing with Clement each week? Like what did that look like and, and how did that support help? So each week um, Clement would, he would provide me a few questions um, that he'll get from random past papers, things that seemed interesting and probably 
a bit out of the box, things that you wouldn't quite expect. And so uh, we would we'd first just do them together, um, side by side, and, um, and we'd, we'd see if I'd, I'd get the result. And if not, he would, he would ask me how I came to that conclusion anyway and show me the, the mistake that I made in my working. Cool, so it sounds like what you're sort of doing is finding the challenging questions, the sort of tricky ones that probably would sort of, you know, cause you to misstep in an exam or an assessment. And then you're basically spending concerted time working through the processes on how to solve them correctly. Yeah, the whole logical problem solving aspect to it. So knowing that it has to be something that we've already learned and it's just about putting the pieces together in a different order. So that's step one, you're getting some help. Right, step two, what are you doing at home? Right, what are you, are you, did you change anything else up differently in terms of what you were doing uh, on your own time? Yeah, so my own time I was, I was really making sure that I was actually doing some of the textbook exercises. For, for lots of them, they're quite simple and not that helpful. But I was, I was making sure that I was doing the last questions. Those, like, those last 10 are usually the ones that are helpful. Um, and then I'd try and find something to follow that up, like in a past paper. So if I was doing derivatives, I'd I'd, I'd look for a hard related question, um, generally from a Roos paper, and see how I go. So the ongoing theme I'm hearing is focusing on the harder stuff. You know, and I think definitely a tendency is to do the earlier questions in textbooks. You know, you've gone, all right, I'm going to find the harder ones. And then you're also going and proactively integrating HSC questions week to week. So you're not saving them up to do them just before an exam. Yeah, it's yeah. a much more integrated approach. It's week to week. You're building on it. So that's step two. Yeah. Okay. Step three, we're now getting closer to an exam or an assessment. Uh, what were you doing you know, in the lead up to an exam or assessment as part of your preparation? So by then it was more like exam technique. So sort of like time trials. So um, I know just before the HSC, Clement and I were doing multiple choice questions. And so I think we had a minute a question and we did, did 60 or 70 of those. And just really trying to make sure that you can get the speed and accuracy because um, in, in maths especially, there's always a time pressure, um, especially if you're like me, because I'm quite slow with my working. Um, and so it's really about making sure that Every time you do a question, you get it right the first time rather than having to set it aside and go back to it later. So, you know, we've got exam, exam condition practice. Yeah. Now, when you were doing that and you were doing these questions with Clement, what if you got it, got it wrong? Would you then pause and, and dive in with Clement and, and look at it? Or would you do all 60 in, you know, minute per question, just trying to get the speed and accuracy? And then at the end of it, go through it and identify where you went wrong. So do, do all the questions. And then um, if I'd say 20 minutes left, for those last 20 minutes, I'd really try my best to, to get them regardless. And if, if I was just sitting there and just going in circles, then obviously would cut it short. But it's, I think it's important to really try and use all that time because um, in the exam, you always have your best answers about 30 seconds before it ends. So it's, it's good to try and practice that, that sort of thought process earlier on to try and move that, uh, like, be able to come up with the solutions earlier rather than going, ah, and, and rushing right at the end. So then a question, what I'm picking up here is that the minute per question was actually less time than you would have in the exam because you might have, what, 1.8 minutes per yeah. question or something exactly. from memory, right? So you're actually intentionally increasing the constraints in practice as well, yeah. right? So it wasn't just the same time as the exam. You're going, how do I get this done quicker then exam time, so that if you don't solve some of them, you had that extra time up your sleeve to come back. Is that correct? Yeah, um, I think a useful tool for that would be the, I think it was pre-2010 maths syllabus. It's basically the same, but um, I think 120 marks and no multiple choice, I'm pretty sure, um, in three hours. So that, that's really good practice for, for increasing your speed. And so the theme I'm hearing here across sort of steps one, two, and three that we've just been unpacking is really you were trying to make practice harder, yeah. counterintuitively, yeah. right? Like it's like, how do I make it harder so that when I go into the real thing, um, to use your words at the end of the HSC, they, you know, you, you felt that you could get any question thrown at you and you could just pump it out. Yeah, definitely. So at the end of the HSC, I walked out and, but for the last question, which I think no one got, um, 
I thought it was the easiest exam of my life. I, I left thinking, wow, was this the HSC? And that's what you want to have, really, yeah. isn't it, right? You want to be able to walk out and be like, I've got this. So what did you do then specifically in the lead up to that HSC exam? Step number four, yes. right? We're now here. What, what did you do? Yeah, to because you know particularly I guess we see you you know as you say externally you got ninety two percent in that exam you did very well, yeah. What, what did your preparation look like? So I had a pretty loaded HSC timetable. So I had English at the start, and then in the same week I had maths. I had two other exams. Um, so I was kind of under a bit of sort of I was, I was a bit time poor. So I tried to get more preparation done earlier on, um, even while I was studying for English. Um, so that way I could focus on investigating science and engineering just on the days. And um, in those, in maybe two days before the, the math exam, I was still doing that, that same method as before, just like really uh, rushing, trying to get it all done really quickly with accuracy. Um, but then in the, the last day or so, in the lead up, I was a lot more chilled out, just really trying to get in the right headspace, um, going through, finding the hardest questions I can, and not not having any time pressure, just just trying to solve them and, and see where I get, and making sure that I was confident going into the exam regardless, because realistically, the day before the HSC, there's nothing you can do, so you can at least think you're going to do well and hope it helps. So then to highlight here, what, what I'm hearing is quite interesting. It's one, crazy time pressure initially in the lead up, right, which is a, a continuation of what you were doing in step three, and then at a certain point, a couple of days before though, you backed off that crazy time pressure. And instead we went deeper into hard questions and really just trying to make sure that if you got those curlies in the exam, you know, you knew how to handle it. Yeah, I think in the last day, I probably only did um, one or two past papers, just chilled out. Yeah, wow, awesome. Now, um, a, a question uh, through all of this then is, you know, what advice would you have to other students who found themselves in a similar situation to you? Big goals, HSC, get a result back, you know, midway through the year and it looks horrible. What, what would you say to them? I think the first thing you need to do is reach out for help, um, especially if, if you're quite emotional about it. You're not going to be thinking logically. Um, and more than anything else, you really need a plan. You need to uh, set, set up, well, put your goals um, let's, let's rephrase that. So you really need to be goal oriented and you need to just find the steps you need to reach that. So what, what parts are you doing wrong? Obviously you need to focus on that um, and, and find someone that can really help you with it. So I, with Clement was great because I could bounce so many questions off him and, and really solidify my knowledge. And I think for lots of people that's all it takes. You don't necessarily need to relearn everything but you just need to be able to refine it and so I think that's the most important tip ask someone else. So there you've heard it guys we've just heard how James turned things around across the year and we've got you know four key steps but I think if there was a theme that emerged from James's journey in turning things around it would be uh, you know really to make practice harder than the real thing counterintuitively everything that James did after that assessment result that went south was to identify how he could identify you know to, you could do the hard stuff in practice get confident with it so that when he went into the exam he was able to improve his results and feel more confident so look if you have any questions about how to turn your own results around or navigating the advanced maths course leave it in the comments below this video you know we have an incredible team of teachers tutors and mentors that can support you just like clement did with james as well so don't be shy get in touch uh, one of the key takeouts james shared was don't be shy to ask for help now finally if you haven't already hit the subscribe button we do videos every week and so we will see you next week Thank you.